Okay, so I met Rebecca and Daisy at a supper club, I think. And I know Dusty Knuckle very well because I'm also obsessed with Dusty Knuckle. And I go in there a lot. <laughs> because I don't have a job at the moment. It's They're going to talk about them. Here we go. Hi everyone. Ooh. Hi. Um, this is Daisy. Hi Max. And we're two of three. The third one is Max, who is really the person who sort of set this all up, I guess. Um, about five years ago, Max asked a very good friend, old friend of mine, asked me to go for a pint. And um, we sat in the New Rose on Essex Road. And he said, Look, I'm fucking over my job, I don't want to do it, I'm working for charities, they never do anything, nothing ever happens, I'm not even helping the people I want to help. He'd been in gang prevention for the previous 10 years, and he said, we've always loved baking, you, we used to bake together as kids, let's just, let's just bake. And I was like, I, I don't know how to bake, like, I'm a chef, and I've just left my job, and I'm in the middle of not knowing what I'm doing in my life, I'm not sure this is the one. And then I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start. I'm going to start to bake. So uh, I went to go and live in Italy and started baking a bit. And then me and Daze were friends from working at a Morrow restaurant together. And I rang Daze and I said, look, my Max, my friend Max wants to start a bakery. I think you should get involved. She was like, mm, okay. Fast forward a year, and then. We basically rang up a pizzeria in Southgate Road and Max said, can we use your pizza oven? We'll use your pizza oven every Saturday morning before your chefs get there and we'll be out by 9am. So on a Friday afternoon, we made 40, 40 loaves? 40-ish 40 loaves in a bucket with some hands and <laughs> cement tubs. <laughs> And uh, then we just put the dough in a friend's kitchen's fridge that like, didn't work. That didn't work, like three doors down the road. And then we all went our separate ways. And me and Daisy did like horrendous catering events in the evenings. And then in the morning the next day, we got up. I cycled at four o'clock in the morning to Max's flat. Had to creep up. He had a kid and his girlfriend in the flat. Find the key for the next door neighbours. <laughs> kitchen for the fridge that didn't fucking work and everything was overproved and then got in a car and then drove to Sweet Thursday, baked it and then used to give it to two different places and then I'd get a bacon sign and I'd just be like that is sweet, I'm, I'm set, this is good, I feel great and we did that for six months yeah and it was, it was sort of sad, sad but quite like fulfilling times, like we made about 30 quid and we were just so happy with that, we were just thrilled to bits. Um, and then we were like, we, we better sort this out and Max was like, yeah, I still want to get kids involved and I was like, we don't even know how to fucking bake, we can't, we can't get kids. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, someone says to us, oh there's a container, you should get in a container and we're like, sweet, let's get in a container. And so someone says, right, enter this competition. So we enter this competition and then they're like, have the container. And we're like, great. So we move into this container and it was pure drudgery. Like it was it was so dark, dark, dark times. And I think back now, like me and Daisy were talking about it, it's like it's like rethinking childbirth or like a terrible trauma in your life. Um, I was like, I just don't want to go there, man. I don't want to. I don't want to go back to that time of me, Daisy, and Max in an empty, cold container. Not. We didn't know how to make bread. We didn't even know how to what a starter was. Like, and we're meant to be selling bread to all these restaurants and cafes. Um, I say that we only had three customers, so it wasn't like too stressful. <laughs> anyway, we just we just get started. Max asked all his friends to come down. Fortunately, my boyfriend is a builder, so we all got him to like build some shit for us. And then we just had this lovely container. I don't know whether anyone's seen any photos, but 
seriously, it is so bleak you can't imagine. And we had one shelf. I remember crying one day and saying, I just want another shelf, man. <laughs> just, just nothing. And then we had an office that was like a 15 minute cycle away, so you'd do your bake and then be like, days, I'll meet you in the office. And then we'd both cycle to the office and have like thousands of paperwork. Basically, anyone who says they know what they're doing when they're setting up a business was way better than we did because we didn't know anything. And then, then we got an oven, and then we got a walk-in. Getting a walk-in was proper big fucking guns. We were well happy with that. Yeah, that was the turning point. That was the turning point, a walk-in, because we just had to have two fosters. Um, and basically, I still don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. Like, you make it up, you read some cookbooks, you go on YouTube, and you ask around, and you pretend like you know what you're doing, and people are like, these guys are sick. And you're like, yeah. Cookbook, and then I got the second, and I was like, too complicated. <laughs> um, and then, oh, so that was pretty it. I mean, that's, I mean, it suddenly seems like really good days actually now that I'm talking about it. Um, and then, yeah, then we, oh, that's it. Then we got a hatch. Everyone said, why don't you make sarnies? Make some sarnies. And we were like, okay, fine, we'll make some sarnies. And then everyone was like, oh, those sarnies are so cheap and delicious. So what we did is we tripled the price. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we just had a great sandwich making business. And then I was like, I'm pregnant, guys. See you later. <laughs> and then Daisy was there. And Daisy really is the reason why we're here with such delicious bread, because I just sort of nonce around having babies making sandwiches. And Daisy is a mastermind behind that dreamy focaccia and that amazing white potato bread. the transition over to our new, I don't know whether anyone's been, we've got a new space now, we used to be in a shipping container, we were there for about two and a half, three years. We've just moved over to a, <laughs> like ten months ago, <laughs> ten months ago, <laughs> so I just didn't move so quickly. <laughs> um, and now we have a big, big space and Daisy runs all of that and did run all of the transition, she runs all of the wholesale and I run the cafe now. So I thought Daisy is probably more suited to tell you about our trials and tribulations moving over from our sh shitty tin container to our well spanking new space. Hey Daisy, over to you mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we moved from the container into a site, a space that was probably six, six times bigger, eight times bigger, and we didn't break production. Uh, because Max was first. <laughs> Max is not really mean, scary boss, you see. And he, uh, yeah, so I baked through the night and then we turned the ovens off. And then we put loads of water in them to cool them down and then we managed to move everything across in a day so that we could. I went across and made all the rest of the bread for the next day. We didn't, we didn't break production, which was quite mad, but then also it was only across the car parks, I'm sure. <laughs> it, probably the things that we've done before. And now we have a triple size oven, so we've got Bread Ahead's old oven that they were throwing away and we took from them before it got in the skip. Um, I think what folks were saying about just buying what you can, when you can, what you can afford is probably a good tip if anyone's we did have it, right? Well, yeah, you just get, you just buy what you can. Bakery equipment's really expensive and quite hard to get hold of. So we've got a really big, very, very, very old oven that when we got, it looked like loads of mice had been living in it. And now it doesn't have any mice living in it. And it, it works really well, except for the top deck, which doesn't work that well, but it's fine. Uh, and we've got a much bigger fridge and we've got three big mixers and uh, we just make as much as we can every day and we've just we've just bought a sheeter which I call a laminator which I don't think is right <laughs> but we've just learned how to use that which is really exciting for all of us and the bakers because it's a whole new discipline it's a whole new skill and it's a whole new thing to learn and we basically just learn uh, on YouTube and books all the books that you can ever get your hands on uh, and speak to whoever you can and that's and just try and then try not to beat yourself up too much when it goes wrong and just that yeah <laughs> I'm so shit uh, and just try and have a thick skin 
and then it's fine. Next day, that's the good thing about bread, it's like, if you have a bad bake, you just, the next day always comes, which is relentless. We always um, say, like, it's just <laughs> fucking bread. It's just bread. Like, you, yeah, you're gonna fuck it up. And actually, it was really interesting hearing the brick house being like, yeah, well, we never sent out shit bread. We sent out shit bread. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit bread. <laughs> and people would bring us and be like, that was shit bread. And we'd be like, oh, well, I don't want it. Remember when? If I wanted flatbread, I would have ordered it. That was a little talent from Pigeon. Um, yeah, and I think now, actually, to be fair. But you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily because we were like, oh, we don't know what we're doing. It was like, I'm fucking exhausted, mate. Just send it. Just send it out. So our integrity levels are, were down, were down, but I blame it on, you know, low morale. We wouldn't say anything like that. Daisy's well strict now. Yeah, I'm really strict now. Yeah. <laughs> we're a lot better than we were. So, moral of the story. Moral of the story. What is the moral of the story? Uh, just, have, just have a nice time. <laughs> yeah. Just be friends. Just be 